force us to do the same. Boss, go get that last kid. Fucking finally. That was like 40 minutes of tape. Like, give cutscenes. I don't want to listen to this shit. And yeah, okay, you can do it while you're doing other things, but... That's distracting as hell. Like, if I'm listening to story cutscenes, I want to have my full attention on those story cutscenes. Or tapes, you know, because they add to the story and whatnot. Like, this is excessive. <laughs> it is really ex excessive. I would take cutscenes any day over this. Jesus. Ah, oh, A plus. Dang it. Please select a mission. Alright. Shit, we're getting near the end now. Fuck. So apparently the method you use is to uh, keep baiting her to stay in the one position or something. Okay. Let me just very quickly Google something, dude. Hold on. Just Googling something real quick. Okay. So, right, 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 right. Mission accepted. Mission not accepted. Boss, we need you to get back a film canister one of our informants hid in the field. He was working under my orders to investigate the extraordinaries that showed up in Cyprus. The man on fire and the floating boy that keeps showing up where they're not welcome. Apparently, they were the subjects of some top secret research conducted by the Kremlin. Fortunately, that meant our informant drew the attention uh -huh. of the KGB's director at S, and they took him out before we could make contact. Dang. The good news is he placed a report in the right. canister and hid it <clears throat> somewhere in Spookmeg Keep. Just before he died, he transmitted VI of the hiding place <laughs> to us, but the data was... <laughs> Sounds like a great place. The image is far from clear, but it might provide the clue you need. We'll be analyzing the data further to try to clear it okay, up. get to Spookmeg Keep. KGB have already dispatched a spetsnaz. That's a funny name. Retrieve that film canister and cover the whole thing up. Boss, there's no time to waste. Head to Spook May Keep and use the VI as a clue to find and retrieve that target. Why was some philanthropist mobile? How are the man on fire and that kid connected to Skullface's plan? If we can just get that report, we can blow it all wide open. Then we can. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, so buddy, we're gonna give you the sinful. I was just looking up at what mission you l you lose quiet, um, because I already know that's a thing. <laughs> so apparently, it's side up one five zero, oh, which then kicks off a main mission. 
and then you've lost her for good. So, with that in mind, because I already knew this, because you know, it's ba- it's Im- it's near impossible to avoid all uh, little details about the game, <clears throat> especially when you take as long as I do to beat a game. But uh, we're getting really close to the end now, though. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty happy to be so close. Boss, retrieve the film canister our informant hid in Spoonmate Keep before he died. It contains vital information on Skullface's plan. For now, our only clue is the garbled photograph the informant tried to send us before the end. We're working on analyzing the data. There's no time to wait. The KGB Spetsnaz squad is after the target as well. Boss, go to Spook May Keep and use the VI to lead you to where the film canister is hidden. Spook May Keep? Sounds like he's saying Spook May Keep. That's far more funnier than anything else. Okay, good. I'll just scout the area. Right. Yeah, this is the right way. So yeah, um... So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, because I kind of want to finish up doing a lot of the other stuff before Quiet leaves, you know? And, um... So I just wanted to make absolute sure that I got this... I know when it happens, so that I can do that, because she is such a great asset. I mean, there is no doubt that she is a really good asset. Dang. Dang, dude. And away you go. Symbols. Oh, wow. They're fucking... Oh, gosh. Is there a car? Well, they see me. I'm getting quiet to cover me, so that's helpful. I think I'm going to rock the uh, rocket launcher, to be honest. What the hell? Boom, bitch. Kaboom. <laughs> Fuck, what are you doing, dude? I don't want to deceive cover. I want her to cover my ass. What the shit? Ah, where is that coming from? Also, eat a dick. There's a heli and I don't know where it is. Ow, where's the chopper? There it is. Yeah, bitch, I missed. You ain't getting away with nothing. Little punk. Cover me. Oh, you straight up bitch. <laughs> Wait, did that not kill him? I shot you in the face like twice, dude. Dang, you got no face. Look at that. He's got no face. Oh, he does. <laughs> I thought I just shot his face clean off. Okay, so what the fuck am I looking for? Oh, yeah. A reel of film. Wherever the fuck that is.
You hear that? Sharks. It's like a chip tune playing. It's probably fucking birds. So unless I bust out the D Dog, there's basically I have no idea where this thing is. Maybe I can get her to just scout the area and find it. Doubtful, but worth a try. I'll just take a bit of everything. Gonna find anything or what? Now the target's hiding place should be clear as day. Check your hydroid. Cool. Where the fuck is it? Except it's not clear as day. What the You hear that? The oh gosh, hell, I don't know. Oh. That wasn't clear as day, you assholes. Blow me. Just, just, just pick me up, dude. I wonder what the objectives for this one are. I can't tell. Like, other than extracting everybody or finding it within a certain amount of time, I don't really know. Like, I could imagine, like, a no detection thing going on, but. Is that a fucking sheep? Fucking sheep. The fuck? People are shooting at the heli? Yo, this fucker shooting at the heli. And that was, unless that was just quiet busting off shots. No, there's people firing at the heli. Bitch. <laughs> Except those guys who are shooting at us. A uh, B, bitch, code name Butterfly. Ooh. Uh. I have no idea what. No, no idea. Oh God, more tapes. Ah, make it stop. <laughs> Fuck. Just make the tape stop. <laughs> There's too many. Just give me a good old fashioned cutscene. <laughs> Just give me that good old fashioned cutscene, bruh. I'll take that shit. Cherish it. <laughs> Holy smokes. Alright. Here we go. 55%. Yeah. Oh my god. We lost a B staff? Mm. 
Not as bad as it could be, I guess. Alright, so there was uh, Miller's Boogers. That is Boogers, not Boogers. Uh, here we go. Fuck me, five minutes. That gulp, though. I cannot call this a hamburger. So, I thought we were onto something this time. Maybe the problem is that it looks like a regular hamburger. Gotta think outside the box. Too much baggage if they come in expecting just a <laughs> burger. Let's see, cotton candy to make it look like a sheep. <laughs> yeah. Just a minute. <laughs> what the hell? Fast food restaurants, bruh. A one man focus group. Well, actually, I've already started. Yeah. I got a place called uh, Miller's Maxi Buns. You are kidding me. Well, to be honest, <laughs> business hasn't been great. <laughs> no one seems to like my uh, buns. The ocelot said Diamond Dogs, but you <laughs> did not add up. But you don't mean to tell <laughs> me. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not embezzling GMP or anything. But still, uh, let's not do anything with snake, okay? Very well. Oh. <laughs> I'm recording this, homie. MSG All that is needed is to chemically isolate those amino acids and incorporate them into your products. To be clear, I speak of flavor. The rest is irrelevant. That seems a little extreme. Do not forget that I am a scientist. <laughs> Ass boy. Thanks 
this old timer. You really opened my eyes. I fooled myself into thinking people today wanted high quality, all natural goods. But my favorite burgers were never about that. They wanted something like the first burger I had in America when I went to meet my dad. Frankenburger loaded with additives. That's the America I knew and loved. I'll be back in a jiffy, old timer. The next burger's gonna knock your socks off. Kazuhira, <laughs> what is important is how we balance You are kidding me. <laughs> Yo. This was one long as fuck. <laughs> this was one long as fuck lead up to that fucking <laughs> that punchline. <laughs> Yo, that's sick. That's fucked up though. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the Soviets called it Oh my god The third boy, <laughs> the third boy was brought to a lab on the outskirts of oh, Moscow from Czechoslovakia shit. after which he was due to be sent to a research center in Leningrad then Siberia and finally an academic town in Novosibirsk It doesn't appear that the researchers witnessed the talents we've seen from him but nevertheless he was quite the popular subject his latent cognitive abilities suddenly awoke en route to Moscow. According to the report, the third boy was easily influenced by other individuals' biofields. Evil thoughts, in particular. They affected his mind <sighs> like a virus. Extreme anger or resentment, motives for revenge, in other words. Now, during the transport flight to Moscow, the boy was exposed to a powerful mental energy field coming from a certain individual. Ever since, being conscious of his powers, he's become a sort of energy generator. What's unique about him is the way his acute telepathic abilities get taken over by another person's will. The boy began to physically parasitize individuals experiencing extreme anger and codify the host's desires. This includes amplifying the host's natural strengths. Or, in accordance with the host's desires, he can also implant program code in another individual, making them a puppet, essentially. Human neural synapses transmit weak electrical currents between neurons. These electrical currents, though at a level difficult to observe, warp the magnetic field outside the body. The third boy is able to pick up these weak fluctuations. Contrary to psychotronics, which involves controlling the human mind, his abilities as a receptor are too high. The emotions he picks up from another individual are amplified and unleashed into his body as they recur in his brain. They turn into microwaves, which then affect the physical world, triggering paranormal phenomena like the spontaneous combustion of organic matter or psychokinesis, you know, moving an object without touching. There's one other thing. While he's parasitizing a host, the boy's ego gets shut away allowing the will of the host to take control of his powers. Like some annoying static drowning out your own voice. That means he isn't responsible for what's been happening. Somebody's extreme anger has manifested through the third boy's powers in ways none of us could have predicted. Which would mean this was going on somewhere around us. Looking back on it, a lot of things make sense now. The man on fire, saw Lanthropus. They both came to life thanks to the third boy's powers. Everything has been happening through him as a catalyst. We first saw him in the hospital on Cyprus. The boy parasitizing the man on fire's desire for revenge gave him his new abilities in return. He next appeared at the Hamid fighter's fort where the honeybee was hidden. There the boy parasitized Skullface's vengeful mind. He controlled Sahalanthropus, making it do whatever Skullface wanted. Same goes for when we extracted Emmerich onto the chopper. When he appeared at the Devil's House in Central Africa, Skullface's will controlled the man on fire via the third boy's powers. Everything is clear up to this point. But even the informant couldn't pinpoint who the host was in the cave within Serac power plant. Sahalanthropus suddenly became active. Then crushed not only the man on fire, but Skullface as well. Surely neither of them could have been the host. Who else was at that location and bore anger more extreme than either of them? 
whose will was controlling Sahelanthropus? According to the report, emotions transmitted in children's brains affect the surrounding magnetic field more strongly. Cerebral nerves are covered with insulation called myelin sheaths to increase impulse speed. The reason for this leakage has to do with the fact that children's myelin sheaths are still developing. So, how many children do you remember being there? Children with a burning desire for revenge and bearing a grudge against you. I can think of only one. Eli. We don't know what kind of life he's Eli. had. Eli. shown toward adults is nothing short of extraordinary. The third boy resonated with Liquid. Eli's mind. And that means Eli bore the strongest animosity of all individuals within the boy's reception range, estimated to be a three-mile radius, beating out even Vulcan <coughs> and Skullface. The third boys probably remain hooked on Eli. Dang. Emotions. You remember at the Devil's House? The third boy showed in... Probably, body. yeah. That must have been his ego making a rare appearance. He may possess abilities far beyond anyone else in the world, but he's still a kid. Maybe them both being kids was enough to bring them together. And if so, maybe with Eli, he isn't feeding off him, but acting in symbiosis with him. So what kickstarted the third boy's powers? Look right. If we look at the location and time that his plane went down, we can make a pretty good guess. When the plane experienced the first... A lot of money kickstarted it. <laughs> ...accurate report of its position to a control tower, due north of the Black Sea, 125 miles east of Kiev. Dead south on the Black Sea is Cyprus's Green Line. So the plane's position was directly north of the hospital where you'd been asleep for nine years. And this anomaly was reported at exactly the same time that you woke up. The plane was enveloped in flame from the inside out. The fuselage burnt to ashes. There were no survivors, at least not publicly admitted. Your thoughts formed a synchronicity with the boy's psyche and were amplified inside his brain. That would have been more than enough to trigger his abilities. Well, shit. Your rage was like a big bang in his head, blowing the lid off his powers. The boy was then secretly moved to the lab outside of Moscow where Volgan was comatose. There, Volgan's thoughts resonated with the boy and he was awakened. Volgan became the man on fire hell-bent on getting revenge on you. His instincts led him straight to you. Skullface knew Volgan from Operation Snake Ear, or perhaps from even before. Monitoring this pair of extraordinaries, he discovered the hospital and sent his assassin and XOF. Skullface was probably watching the situation from close by. Then, realizing how useful these two test subjects could be, he approached them. Reacting to Skullface's thirst for revenge, this time the boy let Skullface's will control Volgan. Volgan, at times driven by personal revenge, at times through Skullface's will, kept on moving, though his body was little more than dead meat. Perhaps there were moments where even your thoughts affected him as well. But without the boy's power, it was like the plug had been pulled from the socket. Everything was powered by anger, malice, revenge. This is how the end of the report sums things up. Both the third boy and the man on fire were originally test subjects of paranormal research for military applications, like telekinetically controlling the leader of an enemy nation and making him launch a nuke, or stopping the heart of someone on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall, experimenting with latent human abilities. They were used as tools of the Cold War. The boy's only crime was being born with unique gifts. But he was sacrificed on the altar of war. His life reduced to slavery under other people's wills. Turned into a living weapon with no will of his own. And eventually the only emotion he could feel must have been the desire to get revenge for the hand he'd been dealt. Boss, it's you that awaken the boy's powers. But there's more to it than that. I guess the anger emanating from you something he could truly relate to. True that. Hmm. Jesus. I keep having to move my mic because, like, there's so many fucking... God damn it. So many, um...
pools, like, um, shit. Okay, I think that's all of them for now. Shit. Subsistence. Extreme. Trader's Cavalorn. You're a whore. Alright, uh, oh, oh, aliens in my room. Alright, illegal. Um. <laughs> they're gonna be real proud of that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so proxy war without end. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! We got. Oh man, the airport again. Shit. This is going to be the last mission I'm doing today, by the way. Okay, okay. Proxy war without end. Let's go. We'll go to that one since it's the closest to the camp. I don't trust you at all. Let's do it. Okay, apparently there was. <laughs> After that time, it de-equipped everything. I don't fucking trust it. <laughs> it's very unfortunate, but what can you do? She's got uh, that. Uh, eliminate the armored. Uh, armored. Yeah, we'll have something that can actually penetrate instead of you know just trying to stun them and lift them off. Fault on the moth. I mean, look, dude. Ugh. It's such a pain in the dick to try and fault in the armor dudes. Such a pain. So after this, hopefully, I'm gonna re I'm gonna go to the ACC, listen to some tapes if there are any, and then I'm gonna go back to Mother Base just to see if there's any cutscenes that need to be triggered. Uh, go back to the ACC if there was a cutscene, and go back to Mother Base and run out all the cutscenes. Then off screen, I'm going to do tons and tons of side missions. And then I will be back. <laughs> so that's kind of the plan. Proxy war without end. Liquid. <laughs> Liquid. Meryl. <laughs> Otacon. <laughs> oh dear. Alright. I already have full. We're going guilty, butterfly boys, because. If he's as good as they say, I want a piece of that. A piece of that ass. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so what have we got over here? No idea, but let's go to him. Cover me, bitch. I don't know what enemy she's seeing, but sure, go for it. So what have we got here? If these are just normal vehicles, then I'll take them out. If they're those, however, then we've got a bit of a problem, don't we? 